प्लीज गिव एन एनर्जेटिक एंड वॉर्म वेलकम टू द वन एंड ओनली संदीप माहेश्वरी It seems there is a slight problem. Let me check. In this year's budget of India, how much is the tax on being happy and excited? Nil. <laughs> Let's try it once again, with full of excitement and a lot of happiness. Good morning, everybody. Two and a half years ago. an mba college in pune invited me to give a speech i prepared the speech mucked it up for a month and was fully confident about it no problem i went there and when i saw 4 500 people sitting in front of the stage i forgot everything blank didn't know what to do then i took that page out the one with the speech written on it and entered a room right behind the stage and started mucking it up quickly as quickly as i could just then a girl entered that room She asked, "So what are you doing here? You have a speech to give." I said, "Yeah, I know, but I'm just uh, fine tuning it." She could sense what was going on. She asked, "So are you nervous?" I said, "Nah, do I look nervous? What are you saying?" She just folded her hands like this and asked, "So you're not nervous? Then what are you doing in the ladies' toilet?" <laughs> <laughs> Then I looked on the either side and said, "Yes, man." After that, somehow, I got out of there and went onto the stage. I went and stood behind the podium. Now, just suppose you can imagine the situation over there. This is the podium, and here I am, fully prepared. Good morning, everybody. My name is Sandeep Maheshwari, and today I am going to talk about blank. One second passed by, two seconds, ten seconds. Every second seems as long as a year. People in the audience stare at you as if you are an alien, just the way you are staring at me right now, as if I'm gonna do something different. But I'm just one of you, know. So just keep standing there, completely blank for almost one and a half minutes. A student of that college sitting in the audience shouted, "Come on, sir, you can do it!" He shook me up. I said, "If he's saying, maybe I can do it." Finally I started speaking somehow finished that speech and got down so this experience taught me two important things about life that if i can do it a guy like me whom people in the family said was shy unconfident i was a complete recluse with no friends in school and lonely so if a guy like me who was an introvert back then can come on this stage and speak in front of thousands of people let us hide those two hours even for 5 minutes then anybody in this world can do anything <laughs> this was the first thing and the second thing i learned made me swear to myself never to mug up anything so everything i'm going to speak today i have no pages in my pocket no mugged up matter No preparations. I have no clue what I'm going to speak about. I'm not going to do this seminar from here, but from here, from my heart. Anything I feel will be coming out directly. No filters in between. Nothing. Are you all excited? Yeah. Now, your excitement level that was here has reached here. I'm going to make three such big commitments that your excitement level will surge from here. up there right through the roof okay the first commitment that this day is going to be one of the biggest days of your life yeah. one of the biggest days and you won't be able to forget it never and i'm not only saying this i'm making a commitment in front of thousands of people whom i don't even know and even if a single person says that this day was not that big or was not that good then he or she can let me know at the end of the seminar and i'm going to apologize to that person in front of everyone for wasting his or her time this was the first commitment now the second commitment a lot of you people sitting here would be thinking 
okay, there must be something in it for us, but tell me what's in it for you. <laughs> Why are you doing all this? What's the catch? Wherever you would have seen the word free written, it has a small asterisk on top of it, really small, the one nobody notices. And at the bottom, it is mentioned conditions apply. Similarly, there is a small asterisk that you missed. But at the bottom, it is mentioned no conditions apply. <laughs> Which means, be it today or any day, I am never going to talk about or even ask for a single penny from any one of you. No profit of any kind, neither direct nor indirect. Not now, not ever. Never. There is no profit, but there is a reason which you will know as the seminar moves further that what is it, that what it is and it's a big one. Final commitment, the third commitment. It's less of a commitment and more of a surprise that today this seminar, this is the last seminar of my life, the last life changing seminar and there is a very big reason behind it which I'm going to share with you at the end of the seminar for this being my last seminar. Now, after making these big, big commitments, let me tell you in brief what's going to happen today. How many of you want to be successful? Yes. Yes. yes! Now, out of these, how many believe that they are already successful? That's it. What's going on? I can prove right now, right now, that all of you are very successful. How many of you know driving? Driving? Out of you, how many ride a two-wheeler? So all of you who ride a two-wheeler, like you said, where do you ride this two-wheeler? Delhi. In Delhi. And many of you in different parts of India. Now, what I can make out of this is that all these years, you have been driving two-wheelers on Indian roads and are still alive. <laughs> Isn't this a success? Yes, it is. And if somebody has a doubt, then just ask a foreigner to come here and ride a two-wheeler. <laughs> ask him. Let me tell you what will happen. The very next day, not even 10 days, the very next day, there will be candles lit in front of his photograph. <laughs> they don't put garlands, no. And somebody would come and ask his mother, I'm so sorry, how did this happen? And his mother would say, he made a big mistake. He didn't jump the red light. <laughs> she would say, it's simple. Here yeah, nobody stops at the red light. People keep driving. Till the time, the person from the other side, whose signal is green, doesn't make a gesture like this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you brother. Yeah. Till that time, don't stop son, don't stop, just keep driving, keep driving, keep driving. But he didn't understand all this. He applied brakes and stopped at the red light. He stopped, but the bus behind him didn't and took him along. <laughs> Which means that in his own life, back in his own country, he might be very successful in many things, but driving in India, he failed and failed miserably. But you all are successful. So what is the problem? The problem is that with time, the definition of success changes. There was a time when driving was a success. Now after learning how to drive, definition changed, getting a degree was a success, right? After that, it was to get a good job or do a business, that also happened. Then success was all about getting married. It's not right to laugh at other people's mistake. <laughs> well, anybody can make a mistake. So marriage also happened. Which means that if I start making a list of things you all are successful in, the day will pass here itself. Even of a single person, you all are so successful. But the only problem is that you don't believe in it. Believe in it and you will realize it. <laughs> only one person can help you or make you successful. And who's that? Can somebody tell me? Only you. Exactly. So this is what's going to happen today. All I'm going to do is make you remember that in those 90% things in which you are already successful, what did you do at that time? 
and once you recall those methods the remaining 10 percent things in which you are stuck all you need to do is simply apply these methods there also and you will succeed in them as well that's all it's that easy now there is a slight problem before we take this seminar forward which I'm not going to tell you, but show you and you will tell me what the problem really is. Now, this is a box and I want to put these balls in it. Now, let me give it a try. Oops, sorry, sorry, sorry. I did not notice it. So, you know what is the problem? This box, imagine this box to be your mind closed by a lid, a lid of your beliefs, everything that you would have heard and believed since childhood. So, the moment I am going to say something that is against those beliefs, suppose I say something and you believe in something else, you will think he is crazy, crazy, let him speak, speak. So, nothing is going to enter inside. So, what to do? Open up your mind so that something enters inside. So, I request you all to open up your mind for the next one and a half hours, let it fill up with what I say then sit back and analyze what is useful and what is not. If you think something is just trash, just throw it out and if you like something, keep it. But at least for the next one and a half hours, just try and understand what I am trying to say. Only then will something happen, only then it will be worth it. So, can I expect that all of you sitting here have opened up your minds? Yes, yes or no? Yes, yes or no? If opening up your mind was so simple, there would not have been any problems. <laughs> Let me ask you a simple thing, who all have open minds by default? Who are ready to learn anything always? Kids, exactly. Let us give a big hand to all those who said kids. <laughs> See, why are we clapping for him? Let me tell you, not because he spoke something extraordinary, but because he at least spoke something. I asked and he answered, this is a very big quality of being successful, that it is not just about thinking, but doing it as well. So, let us do one thing, I have a simple idea, that let us all become kids for the next one and a half hours. I am a kid and like me, you are all kids. So, are you all ready to be kids? Yes or no? Yes, yes or no? Yes. Now that you have said it, you cannot step back. Now you will see what all strange things are going to happen here. Now we play a game that is called Pay attention, it is really funny. Sparrow flies, parrot flies, dog flies, cow flies, potty flies, piss flies. <laughs> now, some of you are laughing, the ones who are have already become kids, and the ones who are not laughing, they have to be kids. Kids enjoy such silly things only. Kids enjoy this only, they do not enjoy mature talks. If somebody expects this seminar is about some complex lectures, so my friend, you have come at a wrong place. If I want, I can make this seminar so complicated that after listening to it, you will say, did not get it, must be something nice. <laughs> but no, what am I doing? I am just sharing my life's experiences with you. My life is easy, so I am going to tell you how is it easy, why is it easy and how can you make your life easy, not complicated. So, I am going to ask you a simple question. And if your answer is yes, then put your hands up. If it is no, keep your hand down. And if there is a doubt, then stick it up till here. <laughs> All right, simple. First question, how many of you are male? Oh, <laughs> some have not raised their hands till now. <laughs> what is this going on? I asked a simple question that how many of you are male, they are not listening to me. They started looking at the person next to them. <laughs> they are looking at his moustaches, that he also has moustaches, <laughs> looks like he is also male. Why is his hand stuck here? Maybe it has to go up till here only. It is a simple straight question, nothing complex, that for whom have you come here? For the person next to you, for me or for yourself? Amen. For whom? Amen. So, my dear brothers and sisters, uh, except my wife. <laughs> so, anything you do has to be for yourself, not for me.
not for the person next to you just forget about him and don't think about what he is thinking the biggest problem is that we keep thinking what the person next to me is thinking and the person next to you is also thinking what he is thinking exactly Woo. let's try it once more this time faster a simple question ready how many of you are female <laughs> there is a gentleman sitting over there <laughs> his hand went up till here and then turned here how can i make a mistake there is no doubt i am not a female has still not become kid no still there is something inside once more we will do it again fast real fast how many are male female male female 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 male 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 female male female male female Woo! now we all are enjoying opening up a bit everyone this is what needs to be done so if you like something laugh for yourself not for me the problem is that a lot of people when at home while playing with kids are fine but outside don't know what happens in seminars at public places and then there are a lot of people who don't even laugh at home their laughter struck by the hard times of life gets stuck it stops so i have given a name to such a laughter and that's constipation smile <laughs> meaning stuck up smile they feel like laughing but don't want to open their mouth how will it come out <laughs> let it out don't suppress your laughter let it out out there is no point stopping it no point so do what you feel like doing because this day is not going to come back this day is not going to come back so now i'm going to narrate a story a story that has a deep impact on my life today whatever i am the story has played a pivotal role in it and later when i'm going to tell you the story of my life that who am i where have i come from what i did what all problems i faced then you will come to know that this story had a big role to play in it a story of king akbar and his minister birbal once king akbar <laughs> some people are already laughing <laughs> as i said don't laugh unnecessarily So King Akbar and Birbal story Once upon a time Akbar and Birbal were going for hunting and Akbar slit his thumb while pulling out his sword he cried out in pain start screaming Soldiers go and get the first aid I slit my thumb it's bleeding hurry up see what has happened Birbal comes in with a smile and says relax my lord whatever happens happens for the best <laughs> Akbar says people have you lost it what are you saying i thought you loved me soldiers do one thing leave the first aid take this crook birbal hang him upside down for the entire night lash him up with hunters and hang him by the neck in the morning so birbal is taken away and akbar goes for hunting alone now he goes to hunt and is caught by a few tribal men they hang him upside down now there is this tribal dance going on hoo ha hoo ha hoo come on guys you don't expect me to dance <laughs> suddenly a tribal man looks at akbar's injured thumb and shouts he is impure we can't sacrifice him to the gods free this impure being he is impure so akbar is freed now akbar is crying it's morning he thinks birbal would have been hanged by now shouting and screaming birbal 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 running towards the palace and he sees that birbal is about to be hanged about to be he runs and holds birbal by his feet says birbal please forgive me you were right whatever happens happens for the best that's why i'm still alive and look at me i'm such a chief fellow and look at me i'm such a chief fellow what have i done to you but birbal all thrashed up still insists no my lord whatever happens happens for the best <laughs> then akbar <laughs> it's not over yet then akbar so akbar is shocked he says birbal are you nuts what are you saying what could be good in it for you he says that if i would have gone ahead with you they would have sacrificed me instead <laughs> now 
Now a lot of smiles here are transforming from constipated smile to loose motion smile. <laughs> flowing, flowing, let it flow, let it out, let it go wherever it want to. So what's the moral of this story? That whatever happens, happens for the best. So how many of you believe in luck? How many of you believe that destiny plays a major role to move ahead or be successful in life? Many? Me too. I also believe in luck. I also believe in destiny. But I only believe in good luck. I believe there is nothing like bad luck in this world because whatever happens, happens for the best. Right. It means that even if something bad is happening, it seems to be bad. It is not actually bad. It seems bad at present, but in future we realize that it was also for the good. So are you all ready finally to see something, to listen to something that could be beyond your thoughts? Yes or no? Yes. Now see what could possibly be beyond your thoughts. This is the thing that I am talking about. Can all of you see it? No? How is it possible, man? How is it possible? In my hand, I am holding a row of 50 feet tall trees with thousands of leaves, countless fruits and you can't see it? Some people can call them seeds also if they want to. Did I say something wrong? Are the tallest of those trees not hidden in the seeds? Hidden inside but not visible. And this seed will become a tree if it gets water. water. If I put these seeds in water, will they all become trees? Yeah. Land. land. And that too, fertile land. If I take a thousand of these and sow them in a barren land, nothing will happen. But sowed in a fertile land, all these seeds are trees. Simple. Just like this. Similarly, all of you who are sitting over here, I have already told you that you all are already successful in a lot of things and offer remaining few things that you want to be successful in. The seeds are inside you. That tree of success is hiding within you only. All it needs is a fertile land. Exactly. Now will somebody tell me what that fertile land is? Anybody? Environment? Thoughts? Thinking. A lot of people over here are saying a lot of different things, but most of you, as I can hear, are saying thinking. It's not thinking. It's not positive thinking. We keep talking about positive thinking, thinking. If we have positive thinking, we will be successful. In a single day, in everyone's mind, it has been proven scientifically, more than 60,000 thoughts emerge. So anybody, no matter how big, how powerful or how evolved, he cannot control his thoughts even if he wants to. So it doesn't make a difference what you think. It doesn't make a difference what you speak or listen to. All that matters is what you believe. Because what you believe sooner or later you become. And if someone believes that he can't do anything, will he be able to do something? No, never. And if someone believes that I can do it, then nothing in this world can stop that person. Yes or no? So simple, so simple. So what am I saying? I'm saying something big that might hurt a few people. That all of you who are sitting here, more than 90% of you don't even have a land that's fertile enough to sow the seeds of success in. That very land is infertile. Strange to hear, na? Okay, I'll not comment on you, rather share my own experience. Till the time I turned 18, as a kid, I believed I could do anything. But by the time I started growing up, grew up, there came a stage in life where I believed that I am good for nothing. Which means my land became infertile. So why did this happen? Where did it all begin? It all began in childhood. So here is a short film that you will see that will explain why did that land become infertile and how to make it fertile again. Since childhood, don't know how many times you would have heard that you can't achieve your dreams. Like your dream of piercing through the clouds in open sky. But the dream ended the very moment you woke up. Because you were told that no matter what you do, you cannot fly. Just like me, you would have heard it a lot of times. 
that life is not easy rather it's very difficult it's not a child's play what if i tell you that all those people who told this to you were intentionally or unintentionally lying about it and in this whole world anybody who has been successful has done so by keeping that little kid inside him alive and not by killing him that kid who is not afraid of dreaming who learns to walk by falling again and again who believes that he can do anything who not only flies in his dreams but in reality as well so are you ready to become a kid once again because being successful is not a man's task rather it is a child's play Isn't this film a bit strange? What we hear in our daily lives is a lot different. There, anybody who is successful or not successful says the same thing: that being successful is very difficult. One has to go through a lot of hardships, lot of pain. Like success is very very hard to achieve. That he who is successful must have done something radical. But what am I saying here? That being successful is a child's play. What will happen? if within the next few minutes all of you believe in it because you already know it i am saying believe in it not knowing it if you believe in it that being successful is a child's play what will happen you will become successful right so let me tell you what happened that made my land infertile which means i wanted to be successful I wanted to do something but believed that I can't do anything. As a kid I dreamt of flying in the sky but by the time I grew up I was even afraid of walking. There was a stage in life when I thought I can't do anything. What was the reason the root cause? The root cause is somewhere in our childhood. How many of you are from a middle class background? A lot of you. I also hail from a middle class background. My family We used to live in a small house, just a two-room set. We had limited income with a rented accommodation. I had a friend in the neighborhood by the name of Puneet. They were well off, and his dad got him a brand new red bicycle, imported cycle. Earlier, when we used to go to the park, we used to race, and I always won. But now, since he was on his cycle and I was on foot, I used to lose. So one day I went back home after losing again and demanded the same cycle from my father at any cost that to the very next day I don't know anything my dad said it's not like this it's your birthday after 6 months I'll get you the cycle then but I was unmoved the next day tired when my dad returned from office my mother went up to him and said that sandeep has not eaten since morning and he's really angry adamant about the cycle Why don't you get him one? She went it out on dad. And my dad was furious to hear all this. He said that I am no Tata Birla who would fulfill all his demands. I can't get him a cycle. Do whatever you want to do and leave me alone. Dad was really angry and I was standing outside and after such a heated conversation I preferred to stay out of the room. <laughs> the next day I walked up to my mom and said I would be around 5 or 6. I asked mom what was dad saying Tata Birla What is this Tata Birla? So my mom replied that these Tata Birla are people who are billionaires with a lot of money. So I became really happy and asked, "So why are we not Tata Birla?" And my mom got irritated and said, "I don't know why. You just go out and play. Go, don't read my brains. Just go, no." I went out. There was an auntie living next door. I went up to her and asked, "Auntie, who is this Tata Birla? Heard about them?" The next day I came to my mother and said, said it mom when i grow up i'll become tata birla till there it was fine like every mom she also encouraged me saying why not and she said you will become tata birla you will become tata birla you will you will one day you will but the mistake she made was right now my mother is sitting here so what she did was she told everyone in the family all my uncles aunts friends and relatives that you know sandeep will become tata birla my son will become tata birla 
Now what happens, like if there is a marriage or an event in the family, when people get tired of singing and dancing, no, they need kids for entertainment. <laughs> True? Right? Kids are called. Come here kid, come, come, come. Recite a poem. Okay, tell us. Do you like your dad more or mom? What happens? And everybody enjoys. In my family, they used to call me. So my aunt used to call me. Oh, Sandeep, come here, come here, come here. Yes, auntie, what is it? And she used to tell everyone, just wait, look, 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 he'll speak, he'll speak, speak. <laughs> now, with everyone eagerly looking at me, then she used to ask, Sandeep, what will you become when you grow up? And I stood there feeling shy, looking down, really shy. She prompted me again, speak up, baby, speak up. Don't be shy, speak up. Tata Birla. <laughs> Saying this, I would run away. And they used to laugh and call me later, kissing me, hugging me, and they used to say, Ay, ay, such a cute kid. <laughs> Why not? You will become Tata Birla one day. You will know once he grows up. Innocent kid. If a kid from a middle class background says that he will become a billionaire, what will happen? People will laugh at him, no? Because we can't accept these things. And that's what happened. Everybody used to make fun of me, all of them. They thought he's just a kid. What difference does it make to him? He's just a kid, no. They were wrong. Because a kid understands everything. He doesn't understand a joke, but he understands when others are making a joke out of him. I didn't know what Stata Bidla. But I knew that everyone is making fun of me. And who are these people? The same people who are my family, the ones I trust, who are dear to me. So I thought that if all of them are saying, then maybe they are right. How would I know? I am just a kid. And by the time I grew up, there were many such incidents and talks. So by the time I turned 18, all I desired was a salary of 10 to 15,000 rupees. That's it. I still remember when I was 18 or 19, I went to someone for a suggestion. Every family has a person or two whose advice everyone seeks, right? Isn't it? Some of you are laughing. It seems they got the same advice as I did. So I went fully prepared, thinking that I'm going to this influential person and if I goof up anywhere, then my family is not going to support me. So I went fully prepared for it. Fully prepared, thinking what he might ask. He asked me 10 things. Saying, what if this happens? What if this? What if this? What if this? Since I was fully prepared, I said that if this, then this. If this, then this. If this, then this. When I answered all his questions, he said that, listen kid, all this you are saying is very impractical. And it can't be done. And I asked, why can't it be done? Can you please explain why can't it be done? He got irritated. Because he was at a position where a kid who was a nobody came and questioned him that why is it not possible? So his ego took a hit and he said, that, listen boy, you don't know anything about it. It's easy to say, but very difficult to do. How many of you have heard this dialogue? Everyone. And that too, how many times? Have you ever wondered the impact of the simple dialogue on our minds? Or on that land that I was talking about? This word difficult is also a seed. Just like the seed of success that I was talking about, this word is the seed of failure. Anything in life, if you keep saying it's difficult, 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 then after some time you will end up saying, it's impossible, it can't be done, the end. So this word difficult, what has it done? It has tied down, it has tied down each one of us like a rope does. Just like an elephant in a circus, who was tied with a rope when it was small. So that baby elephant tries very hard to snap that rope. It keeps trying, keeps trying, keeps trying, but can't break free. It doesn't have the power to do so, can't snap it. So it believes that it's really difficult for me to do it, impossible. And now, when that elephant has grown big, if it wishes, then not only one rope, it has the power to snap thousands such ropes, but it has stopped trying. Stop trying. If someone sneaks in and whispers in that elephant's ear, that dude, you have the power. 
Just give it a shot. You can do it. So how long will that elephant take to snap that rope? One year, two years, ten years? One second. Not even one second. This is what happens. All those beliefs which are based on a lie take years to be formed. But snap in a second. Second. So I'm giving you a few examples of how these false beliefs are broken. For centuries, man believed that the earth is flat. It's flat, flat. For thousands of years, people used to say it's flat. Then suddenly, a few years back, a scientist discovered that the earth is round. And what did everyone start saying? That the earth is round, round, round. Which means that belief took centuries to be formed, but collapsed in a a second. The moment it faced the truth, it was gone. Similarly, all such beliefs are based on lies. All our lies. The moment they face the truth, all of them will collapse. And sometimes when they collapse, no? When they face the truth, some people get shocked, while others take pleasure in it as well. Like it happened with one of my uncles. He had made a belief of his own, of his own, that my son is going to marry a girl of my choice. The sons are clapping, but fathers, anyhow. <laughs> now what happened? It was his own belief, but it's not true. This is not truth. So what's the truth? What's the difference between truth and lie? The truth is that fire is going to burn you. No matter whether you are an Indian, American, Australian or whoever, fire will burn you and that's true. But every son will marry a girl of his father's choice is not true. Not true. Not at all true. He just formed it. So what happened? He made a complete plan that as my son grows, I'll do this, this and this to find a suitable girl. And there was another thing in it that I'll make him do MBA from London. And once he does MBA from London, it will look nice on his bad date of a marriage that the guy has done MBA from London. <laughs> so that guy was sent to London to do MBA. And when he came back to India, he got married and that too to a guy. This is how false beliefs snap, like this. I'm not talking about right or wrong, but I'm just giving you an example. How these beliefs shatter. And in the same way, all your beliefs formed by you, which are stopping you from moving ahead, that have made your land infertile, are gonna be shattered in the next 20 minutes. All of them, all of them, all of them. Because you are going to witness the truth. That rope is about to snap in a few minutes. So are you all ready to make your land fertile? Yes or no? Yes. So how many of you are into a job? Okay. Out of these, how many of you find giving job interviews difficult? Going for an interview gives you nightmares. Okay. So many of you. And how many of you find job interviews easy? Again, so many of you, it seems there is some confusion. How many of you find dancing difficult? Really difficult. How many find it easy? Out of you all, with your hands raised, how many of you can come on the stage and dance with me right now? How many? Oh, so many. Now, why did I ask this? Just to show you a contrast. For some of you, dancing is difficult even when alone. And for some, it's easy to dance even in front of thousands of people. It's easy. What a contrast. What a contrast. Similarly, how many of you find doing business difficult? Business as a name sounds difficult. Difficult? How many find it easy? Easy, huh? Now, there is an interesting saying in India that I can't relate to. That in today's time, doing business is very difficult. Now I don't understand that when did this today's time start <laughs> and when will it end? <laughs> this 
Nitin, what time is this today? Is time gonna go on? So there is a simple thing that's clear now, absolutely clear. Sometimes we are so busy with our lives that we don't have the time to think about these minute things. We keep waiting that someone from somewhere will come and tell us a big secret. A big secret. Or lightning will strike us, giving us that idea which will make us successful overnight. And we keep looking for that idea. Right? While the secret of success is hidden in these minute things and not in big philosophies, if you understand small things, big ones will also be understood automatically. And what is that small thing that I am talking about? That be it a job interview, be it dancing, be it a business or be it anything in the world, it just seems to be difficult. In reality, it is neither difficult nor easy for those who believe it to be difficult for them. So today or tomorrow, it keeps getting more and more difficult for them. And for those who believe it's easy for them, it keeps getting easier for them. So there are a few things that seem easy to you. So they are easy for you. No need to do anything because they are easy. But a few things are difficult for you. If somehow you start believing that all those things which are difficult for you are also easy, then what will happen? They will become easy. Easy in reality. So being successful will actually be a child's play. Right? Now, let's get down to the basics, the roots and see what is really happening down there. That all these beliefs, from where are these being formed? All these false beliefs, how were they formed? Till the time we understand this, how will we break them? Now out of you, how many of you have heard, see no evil, say no evil, hear no evil? Everyone. I believe that if you really want to be successful, then you have to do something else and not this. With due respect to Gandhiji, I don't agree with him. Why? I am saying such a big thing. Why don't I agree with him? Why not? Can you please close your eyes for a few seconds? All of you? Eyes just above your nose? All right. Now do as I say. Do as I say. Don't think about your mother. Please don't think about your mom. You dare think about your mother. And your mother's uh, photograph should not flash in front of your eyes. What all was happening? <laughs> How many were thinking about their father? <laughs> I was saying, don't think, don't think. But even then you were thinking just about her. See, here is an interesting fact that how does a mind work? See, our mind cannot think in words. It can only think in images. It can only think in pictures. For example, I am saying terrorist. Whose image comes in your mind? Kasab. Osama bin Laden. <laughs> Nobody is saying wife, right? <laughs> Don't you dare. <laughs> Such images come to your mind. Mother Teresa. What came in the mind? A good image. Peace, right? Zupta. Any image in the mind? ZXY. Any image in the mind? ZXY. Any image? No? Nothing? It means that our mind can't think in alphabets. It can't think in words. It can only think in pictures. Pictures. So, nothing can be changed by just speaking about it, whether it's easy or difficult. Anything we want to do has a good image in our mind, we find it easy. And if it's bad, we find it difficult. Now I'll tell you about a very interesting experience of my life. 
when i was a kid i didn't know about all this because of which which created a lot of embarrassing situations for me as a kid i loved beating up my younger sister <laughs> she's also here today hi there so i enjoyed beating her up a lot very much and whenever i would beat her up she would exaggerate and tell my dad about it means she would say i got a real beating oh dad he hit me here he hit me there i got a real beating dad would have just returned from office all tired irritated and he would start every day regularly almost every day are you an idiot is your mind full of trash or what don't you understand how many times have i told you not to hit your little sister not with your leg she is considered to be the goddess of wealth <laughs> but i never got it at that time when dad would be scolding me i would look down and apologize sorry and the next day again so there wasn't a problem till the time dad was scolding me problem began when mom entered the scene mom came and she used to pamper me a lot she used to get scared looking at my dad's high temper and she used to come and dad would be scolding me she used to come and say don't get angry don't get angry poor kid spare him don't get angry and as mom started saying this dad who would be scolding me till then would suddenly start beating me up <laughs> i used to think mom why did you have to be here why did you have to be here <laughs> the more she used to say don't get angry dad would say don't get angry thaw <laughs> he deserves it thaw <laughs> Don't do that. Never do it again. I couldn't understand it back then, but today I can understand the problem. Problem is that our mind doesn't think in words, but in images. The moment mom said, "Don't get angry," so what happened? The image of anger came in. Don't. Any image of don't? Nothing. Get. Yes. Do it. <laughs> so. <laughs> she came in to save me but got me beaten up instead <laughs> similarly if you see two guys fighting involved in a heated conversation you don't know me man you don't know me you don't know me man you don't know me and somebody would come and say don't hit him don't don't you no <laughs> not this brick not this brick no he picks up the brick and bang 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 <laughs> so i say see no evil say no evil hear no evil if this is not to be done then what else needs to be done very simple just say see good say good and hear good <laughs> right <laughs> but it is also not something new everyone knows about it and this is called positive thinking everyone is talking about it anywhere you go to think positive think positive think positive does it make a difference to some extent yes to some extent because positive thinking is like allopathy and not ayurveda it's a temporary relief what does allopathy say if you have a problem take a medicine and cure it medicine and cure what does ayurveda say that you make your body so healthy that you don't need to take medicines at all that's the difference you will read a positive book or go to a pleasant place the effect will last for some time it's absolutely true and it applies for this seminar as well that its effect will last only for some time a few hours a few days or maybe a few months and after that back to normal life back and what's the reason i've already told you that anybody no matter how evolved he can't control his thoughts because in a single day more than 60000 thoughts cross by and if you seriously want to do positive thinking practically see here is an interesting fact that either you have to go to a mountain and leave this world no newspaper no television no talks nothing at all just go there and control your thoughts this one is positive nice this one is negative or is no 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 negative 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 so i do believe in positive thinking but not that much 
it has its own role but a very small one it can't remove problems from the roots the second solution is that there are a lot of negative words in the dictionary remove them all from your vocabulary means you don't have to speak them because if you only speak positive words something good will happen with you but are these two things practical practically doable is there someone who says i can control all my thoughts anybody so what needs to be done what's the solution it's simple if i tell you to let those negative words in the dictionary be don't remove them don't control your thoughts as well just take one word that is the root cause of all your problems and failures the root cause take that one word and throw it out of your dictionary can you do this much yes or no yeah. okay for anyone be it us in india or someone in america or canada or anyone in any corner of this world what is the biggest success of life for them the biggest name fame money happiness, happiness. Health. health absolutely let's give a big hand for him no success is bigger than health a man with a lot of name fame and wealth but without health is he any good all is waste no use no success is bigger than health and we all know it nothing new in it so how many of you genuinely want to stay healthy everyone out of you how many know that the best way to stay healthy is to get up early go to a park do yoga or do jogging everyone knows so now how many of you are actually regular that's it hardly 1% or 2% people now see the problem is that we all know these things but when do we remember them about health to stay healthy the time we are sick and visit a doctor or visit a relative or a friend in a hospital when the doctor warns us that either you do something now or the almighty will do it <laughs> cholesterol levels man right and then suddenly we wake up saying something needs to be done now and from that very day you make up your mind that from tomorrow morning 6 o'clock i'm going everything is planned left office on time thinking i have to go i have to go have to go have to go have to go it's around 10:30 in the night and you're feeling sleepy trying to sleep lying down eyes closed you know to wake up early you need to sleep early just then you heard your famous tv soap tune na 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 and the mind got lured towards it you got out of bed okay you got out of bed saying half an hour hardly matters let me watch it and sat in front of the tv relaxing relaxed mood changed all that health mantra is gone <laughs> forgotten it's around 11 o'clock now again surfing channels got freshened up and by the time you came back in bed it's 12 am it's 12 o'clock now when you lie down to sleep and you're about to sleep what's going on in the mind the thoughts that it's 12 already getting up early is really difficult <laughs> and as soon as you think this the mind what it does is it starts working as branches of trees you give it a signal it will make four branches come out then eight then 16 then 50 it means that the moment you signaled that getting up early is difficult the mind will bring forth a thousand reasons as to why is it difficult a thousand reasons which will not be true self made by you only created by your own self like for example the mind will be saying that dude i have tried it earlier as well nothing has changed <laughs> nothing is going to happen now as well so no use the second thought will be i tried getting up at 6 am earlier as well i somehow woke up but the eyes didn't open got hit by a side table <laughs> and this knee still hurts strange thoughts will come to the mind strange thoughts that if i wake up early like i'll feel sleepy throughout the day in office and then what will you do change the alarm from 6 am to 7 am saying getting up an hour later will hardly make a difference now you are remembering because you have said it's difficult so the mind is giving you reasons that you read an article in a newspaper which said that a minimum of 7 to 8 hours of sleep is a must (Laughter) 
Apart from this, some people's reasons are even stranger. Like one of my friends, I told him that from tomorrow morning, you come along with me and let's go jogging. He said, I'll not go in the morning, I can go in the evening. I said, why? Why not in the morning? He said, I go to the park in the morning and I see that man and I don't like his face. <laughs> I said, what kind of reason is this? Now the solution of this problem. And it's really simple. That very moment when this thought comes to you, when you're just lying down, lying down, all you need to say is that no matter how late I sleep in the night, getting up early is easy for me. It's easy. Now you know what will happen? Really? The moment you will say it's easy, a voice inside you will say, are you crazy or what? <laughs> How is it easy? Because we aren't used to it. Then you will say it for the second time, it's easy. Then for the third time, it's easy. Getting up early is easy. The moment you say it three, four times, your mind will give you a thousand reasons that will prove it's easy. It will go in the opposite direction. At that time, mind will be filled with some other reasons which will be completely different from the previous ones. For example, the first one will be, come on dude, I just have to get up at 6, not drill through a mountain. Earlier also so many times, so many times I have caught a train and to catch it, I woke up at 4 in the morning, 4 am and that too on my own. 5 minutes before the alarm went off, I woke up myself. I can catch the train again even if I miss it. But where will I get this body from once the health is gone? Can you make out the difference? The difference between positive thinking and this? In positive thinking, someone from outside is trying to make you positive and the negative thoughts inside you are stopping him. The moment you say it's easy, you're yourself trying to be positive. Nobody from outside is doing it, rather your own mind is doing it. Now, this is what came to your mind. And apart from this, the second thing that came was that earlier you were thinking that you will feel sleepy in the office. There is nothing wrong in it. But just see how the perspective changes. Your mind will think, so what? Even if I feel sleepy, I'll have three, four coffees extra and then I'll get used to it. Finally, the biggest of problems, the one that my friend had, maybe you also relate to it, the one my friend had, that if I go to the park in the morning and I'll have to see that man's face. So now when you will say it's easy, you will not see the neighbor's face, but his beautiful wife's. <laughs> it's that simple. This is it. Be the smallest to the biggest of problems of your lives. Just take these two words and stick them up with all these so-called problems. The day it starts coming from within, that it's easy, that day, everything will become easy. And this is the biggest secret of my life. The biggest. There was a stage in my life when I thought that I'm good for nothing. I can't do anything. I can't do anything, nothing at all. Went to a call center for an interview, don't know where all I went, did what not, but didn't get a job. It was a stage that if someone would have offered me 6,000 rupees for which I would have to work for 12 hours, slogging for the entire day, doing heavy loading jobs, I was ready. There were such major problems in my life. At that very time, an exactly similar moment came in my life. The same moment that's gonna come in your lives in some time. When I watched someone, just the way you're watching me now, I saw someone who appeared to be just like me, exactly like me. Two eyes, one nose, two ears. I said he looks just like me. And when I heard him speak, a voice came from inside, inside me. Nobody said anything, it came from inside. That if he can do it, so can I. If it's easy for him, then it's easy for me as well. Finally, the moment has come to decide because I believe that if nothing has changed, then nothing will change. Although you all have come here, but if you don't make a commitment to yourself or don't try to change yourself, 
then nothing will change when you step out of here. Nothing different. Just a good time pass and finished. So it's time to make a commitment to yourself. Take a decision to change yourself. You have two options, two. First, there are a kind of people in this world who themselves keep making the smallest of their problems, their troubles, bigger and bigger and keep complaining. There are a lot of such people and there is nothing wrong in this. All we need to do is understand that if we are like these people, only then will we be able to change ourselves. But if we don't accept it and say, no, I'm not like this, then you will be like this only, like you have always been. Second option, this was the first option. Second option is those people, and there are millions of people like this, who themselves make the biggest of troubles of their lives really easy, thinking of them as nothing and always be happy. So what have you decided that from now on, will you be happy or just complain? Be happy. Now, the moment I was talking about has arrived. I'm going to ask you a question from the bottom of my heart. And the ones whose inner voice comes out, for them, the land has become fertile. Fertile. Anything that was, anything that was past has passed. Let it pass. But today, but today, do you believe you can change your future? Yes or no? Yes, yes or no? Yes, yes or no? Yes. Let's celebrate. This is a very big moment. And I'm not just saying this, I can give it to you in writing, signed if you want. That life will not change for the ones who said yes or decided from the bottom of their heart, yes. For them, life has changed, already changed, already changed. The land has become fertile, done. There are people in this world whose problems could be a hundred times bigger than yours, but then also their success is also a hundred times bigger than yours. Which means that problems and success don't have a direct connection. It's all about what you believe in. Something we have just realized. Now, just a small task to do. The land has become fertile, but no matter how fertile a land, if you don't take good care of it, what will happen? It will be barren again, back to being infertile. So what we need is a plow to keep tilling that land. A plow. And now what is that plow? It's easy. Exactly. Don't underestimate its power. It has changed my life. What needs to be done is that anything you want to do in life but believe you can't do it, just attach these two words. It's easy. And then see what happens. I'll give you an example what happens. How many of you are students? Students? Okay. Many would be engineering students also. How many are engineering students? Engineering students? A lot. Now what happens is inside an engineering college? Leave alone the top engineering colleges like IITs, other top colleges, number one, number two. But not many students get admissions in these. And they get admission in a college which is not highly ranked. Now what's the general discussion in that college? And after taking admission yourself, you're cursing that college all the time? This college has this problem, that problem. You're told about so many things while taking admission. And now they're not doing anything. This is bad, that is bad, that is bad. And the worst is the placement cell of this college. <laughs> all the students, all of them are saying that a degree from this college, leave alone any MNC, will hardly manage to get us a rupee 6,000 job. Right? This is what happens. Such strange stocks are going around everywhere. And we also start doing it. What you need to do is leave aside everyone else. Whatever they do, if you want something different, something good to happen to you, then you'll have to say, to hell with the world, I'll pass out from this very college and to get a job in India's top multinational company for me, it's easy. Right. 
Let those 99% people say it's difficult. Let them do a 6,000 rupee job. Let them fight over it. I'll get into a top company. Now what will happen when you say this? From outside, you will say it's easy. But the inner voice will say it's difficult. Again from outside, you will say it's easy. But the inner voice will repel saying it's difficult, difficult. The day your inner voice says it's easy. Inner voice from here. That yes, it's easy for me to get a job in that company. Within some time, I can guarantee this, you will be sitting in that company. And this is not something theoretical that I am saying. Practically you pick up any big company, any big company of India or world for that matter. Have all the people working there passed out from top colleges? No! no. More than 80% of them have passed out from colleges ranked lesser than your college or similar to your college. So my dear friend, if 80% people can do it, then why can't you do it? Right. When you say it's easy, then you will see millions of people who have passed out from even lesser great colleges and have opened up massive companies in their own names. Right. Right. Now, till here it's clear, our land is fertile, we've got a plow, but if we keep sitting and just say, it's easy, easy, will something happen? Nothing will happen, means something needs to be done. It's time to do something, to decide what needs to be done. Without this, nothing will happen. Now, this is where a lot of people get stuck. Some say, there are a lot of options, what do I do? They say, there is a confusion, what to do, what not to do. Many of you. And then there are those who say we don't know what to do. We don't have an option, zero option. Right? Two kind of people. And now to decide what to do and what not to do, saying it is easy, but doing it is? Some of you said it's difficult. It's easy, right? See, there are only two options. Only two options. Very simple. First, to listen to your outer voice. And what is this outer voice? What others say? What others do? What did he do that made him successful? What is he doing? Or asking for advice from someone. Like what should I do? Or what career to pursue? Once a guy came to me and said, please tell me an interesting business to start. I said, these days, space tourism has great scope. I said it very seriously. He asked, what is it all about? I said, nothing, you just buy a rocket. Take people in space and take them to moon. He said, why are you joking man? I said, who started it first? <laughs> so what's the second option? The first one is outer voice and the second one is listen to your inner voice. Inner voice, whether you call it your soul's calling, your desire or call it anything, but listen to your inner voice. And the day you listen to it, no, that's it. You don't need anything. A simple example. Real life incident of every house. There is a kid who has just one passion. To open up and reassemble his toy cars. Open up and reassemble. Open up and reassemble. That's it. And that's all he enjoys. Nothing else. Now gradually as he grows up, now he's fond of computers. He keeps opening and reassembling them. TV, electronics. Now he turns 18. And it's time to take a call. What to do and what not to do. Now his inner voice says, go for engineering, engineering. But everyone around said, that son, don't go for engineering, there is no scope in it. And he was told that, listen son, you go for chartered accountancy, CA. <laughs> but why CA? An interesting point. It's a very interesting point. Nobody analyzed what that kid wanted. What was his talent or interest? No, CA because someone in the family did CA 15 years ago and today he is making good money. So what will happen now? This is not his inner voice. The problem is not that everyone said. The problem is that he also got scared. He said, let me do what everyone is saying. No, why take a risk? Why take a risk? If something goes wrong, then who will take the blame? Right? So he opted for CA. Now he's doing CA, but completing it is a big task for him because he has no interest in it. And on the other hand, if he would have done engineering, then today or tomorrow, 
just the way he was reassembling computers, he would have reassembled an aeroplane as well. Now, we all have understood that we can do anything, we have heard our inner voice, internally we know what we want to do, but then also after having a fertile land and seeds in our hands, if we do not sow these seeds, will something happen? Nothing. If we do not take an action, worldwide a lot of researchers have proved that 90 percent people who failed have one big reason, one common reason and that is that they do not even try. They do not even try. It means that they have the seeds in their hand and keep on thinking to sow or not to sow, sow or not to sow, sow or not to sow or wait for the right time to sow and they keep on thinking. So, they do not fail because they did something, but fail because they wanted to, but never did it throughout life, right? Now, we understand that the problem is not taking an action. Let me ask all of you, why do not we take an action? We know we have to do this, still we do not do it, why? It is one word, one word. Fear. Fear. Risk. And that is completely genuine. I am not saying it is wrong. It is completely right because we are not alone. Today your inner voice says, I must do this. You also have your family, your house, kids and everything. How will you do it? There is a risk involved. Rubbish. All rubbish. I do not buy it. Why so? Because there is nothing known as risk in this whole world. God or whoever created this world did not make anything by the name of risk. It is man who is creating risk for his own self. We are ourselves creating risky situations for ourselves and are getting scared of them. A little kid who is just born, we tell him impatiently, everybody encourages him to run, run kid run. What will happen to the kid? He will break apart, he will fall, right? It is risky. But if that kid is given time and he is told to start by crawling slowly, slowly, then walk holding a finger, then walk and then run. Is there a risk then? Not at all. Yes or no? No. Here is an interesting thing that happened with me five years ago. One of my friends came who had done MBA finance. I asked, what's up man? He said, nothing man. It all looks fit, but life is shit. <laughs> I said, what happened? He was actually very tense. He said, I'm not happy. So, nine or ten hours in office are so suffocating. I have no interest in this finance field, no. And it's really bad. And by the time I come home, I take all my frustration out on my wife and everybody. I just lose it and get irritated. I said, okay, it seems that you need to do something else or think of something else. So, he said, that's why I've come to you. And I asked, uh, what have you thought of? He said, man, but uh, will you be willing to help me? I said, come on, man, just say it. I'll do whatever I can. So, he said, I think I should learn photography just the way you did. Will you teach me? I said, that is fine, I will teach you, but why do you want to do photography leaving finance aside? Why photography? Any reason? He said, because you do photography and stay very happy. <laughs> I said, great, so it is decided. You come to my studio from tomorrow, I teach you photography, but do one more thing from tonight, start eating bitter god as well, some fresh bitter gods, nicely cooked. He said, what are you saying, man? I said, it is clear, no, it is clear. I stay happy by eating bitter gods as well. So, do everything that I like to do. I said, listen man, you were about to make the same mistake you did many years ago. I said, I will make you see 100,000 photographers, 100,000 who do photography like me and are not happy at all. For them, photography is just work, nothing else. And I said, I'll show you 100,000 people who do what you have been doing from the field of finance and are very happy, very happy. It means that no work is interesting or boring in itself. It all depends on your interest. What do you like? Anything that is from inside is good for you. And if not, then it's all waste for you. And so he got it somewhat. He said, and he said that I don't get it. All this inner voice thing and what all you say. How to listen to my inner voice? There is no inner voice inside me. <laughs> it's a genuine problem. Now, there is no voice. What will you do? I said, look, I'll make it simpler for you that how to listen to your inner voice. Any such work 
that you can do without getting tired non-stop 12 out of 24 hours in a day without bothering about money whether earning more or less and still be happy about it that is your inner voice. So, he smiled a bit, I saw his eyes lit up, he smiled and said, this great man, but there is only one such work that I can do for 12 out of 24 hours. I said, what is it? He said, I am very fond of eating. <laughs> I walked up to him and touching his bulging tummy, I said, well, I can see that. <laughs> I said, I would have known it anyway. He said, come on man, I am serious. I said, okay, tell me now. He said, what I mean to say is that I am not just fond of eating but cooking as well. Cooking is something I can do for 24 hours. Everyone at home makes fun of me. Why do you keep roaming like a cook? But I just love cooking. I said, cool, so do something related to cooking. What's the problem? Do it. He said, yeah man, thanks for the idea. I said, I didn't give it to you. You gave it to yourself. So he said, now, what I'll do is, you wait and watch. Now, I'll open a big restaurant in a big shopping mall. So, I asked, how will you go about it? Buy a space or take it on rent? He said, come on man, you know I don't have that much money to buy a space. Obviously, rent is the only option. I said, okay, take it on rent. Still, it's not a big investment, no? Just assume the rent of a big restaurant in a big shopping mall, like 200,000 rupees as rent. Just 5 million rupees is all you need. You must be having that much on you. Just calculate, no? He started calculating. All my savings from here and there, taking from dad, borrowing it from friends. Three to four thousand hundred rupees I can manage. <laughs> I said, great man, you're just about there. Great man. Okay, three to four hundred thousand rupees from here. And what about the remaining money? He thought a lot and said, I think dad won't mortgage the home for it. <laughs> I said, you lost it, man. Just think of something else, man. He said, I'll make a proposal of my restaurant and go to a bank for a loan and I'm sure I'm gonna get one. I smiled. I smiled and said, my brother, bank only lends money to those who actually don't need that money. Right? <laughs> On what basis will you apply for a loan? On what basis? He said, yeah man, I think you're right. I won't get a loan. So what to do? I think it's really difficult, leave it. I said, why is it difficult? He said, no money, na. I said, why? You just said you have the money. He said, no, I didn't. I said, no, you said there is money. What about those three to four hundred thousand rupees? He said, but they are not enough to open a restaurant. I said, who told you to open a restaurant? Out of these three to four hundred thousand rupees, you can keep aside one hundred thousand rupees and open a nice stall with the remaining money. A nice stall. He said, come on man, I'm MBA finance, I won't put up a stall. <laughs> I said, why, what's the problem? Put up a nice stall. He said, no man, I can't put up a stall. Try and understand. I said, I am understanding it, but you are not. Let me explain that why you don't want to put up a stall. You know if you put up a stall, you'll be happy. You'll enjoy it, you'll cook food, serve it and people will pour in. And today or tomorrow, you will open up a big restaurant as well, from that stall, and you know it. But then also you won't do it. You know why? Because you are thinking that what will my father-in-law say that I got my daughter married to an MBA finance and he has put up a roadside stall. <laughs> right? I said, this is the reason, no? That what will he think? What will your family think? What will your wife think? What will everyone think? Great, keep thinking. He said, yeah man, you are right, but still I can't put up a stall. Not a stall. Now this is a big problem. Everyone's falling prey to what will people say. <laughs> what are The biggest problem. The biggest. I asked, do you remember what happened when I started photography? At that time, the whole world laughed on me. The whole world. Including my family, my relatives, even my friends. Wherever I went, people used to say, look at him man. 
Hey man, take 10 rupees and click my photograph. There was a stage when you would remember what you said to me, that I have already booked photographers for my marriage. But you can also come and click a few photographs. If at that time, I would have thought that what will you think or others like you would think, then I would not have been here today. I said, those people can go to hell. Whatever everybody thought of me, I didn't care. That's why I've reached here. And it's not me alone. There have been a lot of people in the world who did the same thing as I did. They followed their heart. That means they listened to their inner voice and took small, small steps. Small, small steps. Didn't take a big leap. But we all try to start with a big jump. That I'll do this and I'll do that. What's the problem, man? Do whatever you want to do today. And that too, from the smallest possible level. And then see who stops you. Nobody will be able to. Nobody. <laughs> what we want is that here is a seed in our hand. And somehow it should grow into a tree overnight. A fully grown tree within a year. That's it. Is it possible? No. So what's the right way? To sow the seed. Take small steps in the beginning. Don't. Never try to force it out. Take small steps. That is, neither to run nor to stop. Just keep walking. Keep walking. Now there'll be only one glitch in your way ahead where a lot of people get stuck. Which means that if you do as told, then you will earn money for sure. In anything you do, you will earn money, but will you be successful? And for that, there is a final step that you must follow. And this is also gonna sound strange to some people because it is just the opposite of what people say about success. But this is true, with proof. You made your land fertile, sowed a seed. That seed has grown into a tree with a lot of fruits on it. Now, if you lose it, and say that I'll eat all these fruits alone, not give them to anyone, not share it with anyone, what will happen? Either those fruits will rot or you will die trying to eat all of them. Simple. Now here's a story that has a deep impact on my life. Two farmers in a village used to do similar kind of work. Both died and went to God. When they reached, God asked them, So tell me sons, what do you want to be next? What do you want? So the first farmer, full of frustration and anger, started complaining, What God, what a pathetic life you had given me. I had nothing on me, nothing. Look at what you did to me. Whole life passed working like that ox in the field, working, working. Whatever I earned, people used to take it from me. Nothing stayed with me. Nothing stayed with me. So God, in my next life, please make sure that I don't have to give anything to anyone. Rather, everyone should give me money from everywhere. Everywhere. God said, so be it, son, go. The second one came, God asked, what do you want? He said, God, you gave me so much. I have nothing more to ask for. A good family, a nice work, a nice village, no shortage of food ever. I never slept hungry. But there was just this one thing missing in life. At times, a few hungry people used to come to my door asking for something. Just do something that nobody should go hungry from my door. God said, so be it, son. Go, son. Both of them were reborn. In the same village, both of them grew up. The first man who said that everyone should give me, give me, and I don't have to give anything to anyone. So this man became the biggest beggar. <laughs> I'll not give it to anyone. Everyone should just give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. And the second man who said he didn't want anything but just to feed the hungry. He became the richest man of that village. The richest. It's simple. If you want to stay happy, then there is only one way. Spread happiness. 
spread happiness it's so easy no there is no other way you keep staring at someone with anger and expect him to give you happiness how is it possible how is it possible how will anyone make you happy how will he if you keep on fighting then the other person will also fight with you out of all the husbands sitting here how many want their wives to respect them <laughs> all of you then there is only one way respect your wife that's it there is no other way no other way we want it but we don't give it we want love but we don't give it we want everything we want that we must get everything now i'm going to say something that's going to shake up a lot of people really shake them up now how many people wish to have a lot of money over here then there is only one way to get it give money Some of you are not clapping, looking at me very seriously, thinking that I am going to come up with a box. Ten rupees, 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 ten rupees. Giving money. How can someone give money? There are strange things that we believe about money, and that too rooted deep in us. No father, no brother, only money to gather. Hey, and some people actually think it's true. they fighting with their parents with their brothers and sisters only for money for money i'm not saying that money is not important that would be impractical to say it is very important very important but money is only as important as fuel in a car neither more nor less without money the car of your life won't go on this is true but how many of you drive your real car or bike just for fuel just to collect fuel take the car to the pump buy fuel keep it inside take it in the car take it in the car from here in the car how many anybody so what happens when it comes to money why are we stuck there and that's where we make a mistake Why? Because a lot of people in the world are doing it. So we think maybe this is right. When everyone is doing it, then it must be right. We know this is not right. Filling every corner with fuel, 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 fuel. So much fuel that there is no place for anyone to sit in the car. No place to even breathe. One day a slight spark will burn everything up and we'll perish in that fire. It's going on, no? people are burning they might be successful in everybody's eyes but not in their own and this is no theory if on one side we have somebody for whom money is everything who is very selfish and he has a lot of money a lot but he has only money nothing else no happiness nothing at all neither does he give happiness nor gets happiness and on the other side is someone who might not have that much money but he believes in just one thing spreading happiness in this world so man like him who is spreading happiness in this world even if he has less money he is a thousand times more successful than all those millionaires a thousand times this is called real success and on the other hand make those people come and stand here who might have a lot of money but don't have the courage to give courage to share to be happy to give happiness and smiles they can't look into anyone's eyes and say that they are successful they can't the world says they are but they are not now let's talk about how it works practically the sharing logic there was a stage in my life when i was doing photography and i used to do everything myself i was the office boy I was the cleaner and there was a small studio in one corner of my house had put a table chair over there used to serve water to people did photography counseled people talked to them and i realized that i won't be able to do it all by myself so i recruited a female on somebody's reference and a female joined now when that female came for the job she asked for 10000 rupees as salary 
I can't give you 10,000 rupees, but 8,000 rupees is fine with me. So she joined. And within two months of when she joined, work started increasing at a good pace. After two, three months, I thought that presently I earn 20 to 25,000 rupees a month. Out of which this girl only takes 8,000 rupees. I have no sense. So I told her politely that I can't give you 8,000 rupees, but 6,000 rupees is fine with me. Do it or not, your choice. And she left. After she left, for one complete year after that, I was stuck where I was. Couldn't move ahead a single step, even a single step. Anybody, anywhere in this world, if he says that he can do everything alone, then he's lying. He needs people to help him out. But why will anyone help somebody else before helping his own self? So he will help you only if you will also think of helping him. Simple. Let me ask you a very simple question. If there are two companies, so out of those two companies, the first company, while taking your interview, makes false promises by saying that we will give you this, this, this. Don't worry, all will be good. But when you go and join, it's completely opposite. Like there was nothing about paying extra for overtime. No, this won't happen. That won't happen. This won't happen. You have to do this. You have to do that. If you want to do it, fine. Or leave the job. Making you work for 12 hours, 10 hours, for an 8 hour job and not even paying overtime. There are such companies. On the other side, there is a second company that does exactly what it promises. An 8 hour job means an 8 hour job. Work extra and overtime is paid. Everything said will be done. Apart from this, it also thinks about you. So which company will you join? First or second? Second. Now, should I tell you something, honestly? That all of you who said they will join the second company, those very people, if decide to open up their own company, they will end up being like that first company. <laughs> they'll forget about it. Now, when they will have their own company, they'll wish to get an employee worth 8,000 for just 5,000. What are we doing, man? What are we doing? There are two kinds of people in this world. Those who believe in sharing and those who don't. Now the ones who don't will today or tomorrow have their hands and legs cut. There will be a stage when everyone will leave them and go away to join those people who believe in sharing by their heart. Today they have two hands. Gradually they will have four hands. 10 hands, then 100 hands, and then thousands. A day will come when he will have countless hands. And that day, success will be a very small word. It will be a miracle. Miracle. People will say and say, impossible. How did this happen? How can this happen? How did this happen? How can he in such less time? How can he do it? How can? How can? It's simple man. He knows about sharing and you don't. The day you do, your life will also be full of miracles. Everywhere. <laughs> now, the tree of success has a lot of fruits and we are sharing them. Knowing more fruits will grow. We are sharing. So you have become successful. But now the question is, who am I? What's my story? As a kid, I thought I could do many things. But as I grew up, I thought I couldn't do anything. And there were a lot of reasons behind it. Out of which the biggest reason was that when I was in 10th standard, some major problems hit our family. My dad had a business of aluminium from 20 years in partnership with someone that closed down overnight, because of which our financial condition became critical. We had no clue what will happen now. Nobody had a clue. And my father went into a bit of depression as well. And there was a strange atmosphere in the house. Everybody was worried what will happen now. I was studying, what could I do? Now there are two things that happen in these kind of situations. One, there are families that break apart, fall apart. They start fighting within themselves. And two, there are families that come together. Our family chose the second one. Me, my mother, my younger sister, we all came together and said, this is not only my father's problem, but our problem. 
and we will find a way out. We will do something, something will happen. So now I wanted to do something but believed that I can't do anything because my land was infertile. So we tried a lot of things like we did a business in which my mother used to pack handmade sweets and I used to go and give those boxes to people and I took those sweets here and there, distribute pamphlets in my friends and relatives everywhere but that didn't work and closed down. After that we opened up a telephone booth, photo state, STD, PCO, my mother used to run it, at times I also went there to help her. And going there, my land became even more infertile. Because I saw people fighting with my mother for just 25 paisa. I felt angry. But what to do? Such was life. That's when I thought that money is everything. Money is God. I just want money anyhow. I don't want anything else. Just get me a job from somewhere. So that I get money and solve all these problems. So that telephone booth also closed down. After that, I went for a lot of interviews and failed everywhere. Had no clue what all was happening. And then came the turning point of my life. I went to a seminar, it was a multi-level marketing company seminar. I was 18 at that time and honestly speaking, in that three hour long seminar, I didn't understand even a single thing. Everything went through here. And I exactly remember where I was sitting. It was an auditorium and I was sitting on the third seat from here. I was looking at a 21 year old guy standing right here. Till the time he kept talking, nothing entered my mind, everything bounced off. But then he said something in the end, he said, I'm 21 years old and I'm earning 200,000 rupees a month. What they had done was, had got a big photocopy of that check and were showing it on stage and I was counting zero sitting there. One, two, three, four, five. And I was thinking that this guy is actually earning big. 200,000 rupees a month. I was shocked. My mind blew off because I had seen that even to reach a level of 10 to 15,000 rupees takes years. And here's a guy who's just like me, who earns 200,000 rupees a month. And that was that one second. It was that one second of my life. Something in me shouted out that if this guy can do it, who looks just like me, then why can't I do it? Am I from a different planet or what? Why can't I do it? If it's easy for him, then it's easy for me as well. I can also do it, can do it. And the moment these two words entered my life, the moment I believed that everything is easy, changes started happening inside me. From what I used to say, it's difficult, nothing can be done, bad timing, don't know what will happen. I started saying, you see what I do now. We'll get 200,000 rupees checks like this. We'll start my own companies. You just wait and watch. You don't know what's gonna happen. And everyone started saying that Sandeep has gone crazy. Now, this is a very interesting point. Whenever people start saying you have gone crazy, it's an indication that you are on the right track. A tinge of craziness is a must. And that's what happened. I became crazy, started saying strange things. I started feeling from within, it's easy. Land became fertile. One step complete. Now the second step, to discover what to do. Now there were two voices, outer voice and inner voice. I saw that man on stage and looking at him, I said, I want to be like him. If he's doing this, then I'll also do this and earn 200,000 rupees a month. But it wasn't my inner voice, all outer voices. So I took around 20, 25 people to that company and nobody joined. In fact, the ones I took ridiculed me saying, where did you take us? <laughs> and how much will you give us out of your 200,000? So I failed, badly. And there were two reasons why I failed. One, it was not my inner voice. And two, I didn't understand sharing. I was taking people there, not for their benefit, but for my selfish reasons. As an 18 year old, all I thought was to solve my own family problems. To hell with these people. So I couldn't fool people. So back then when I failed, was it my good luck or bad luck? Bad luck, no. How can it be good? As per that time, it was bad luck only, no? But this is the very mistake because nothing is bad in this world. Because whatever happens, <laughs> happens for the best. Success comes from experience and experience comes from bad experiences. Which means, 
that success can only come to you with experience and experience can come to you only through bad experiences not with good experiences right and this is what i understood when i went to that company it was not a waste although i failed financially but i got to know about a lot of good things and started understanding them different things entered my mind that i understood that yes I understood that even failures are useful so I didn't feel sad after that I heard out of voices once again again I made the same mistake I was told by my relatives family members don't know seriously or not they told me that sandeep you have got looks of a hero man <laughs> and I thought so many of them couldn't be wrong I heard the out of voice and went to become a hero to be a model i said i will if everyone is saying i will so i went and saw that heroes like me thousands are standing in a queue and eating roadside burgers <laughs> i said to myself sandeep there you go do but i didn't lose hope i was determined to do something easy 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 it's easy won't work till the time it doesn't come from inside and that's what happened i told myself many times that i'll do it i will i will but it wasn't from within to become a model or a hero or do acting I used to go for auditions but went blank forgot everything didn't enjoy it from inside did some music videos as well such music videos that if i make you see them you would die laughing when my 5 year old son is troubling everyone ransacking the house then my wife just plays that video and my son sits there looking at the screen and says is this dad <laughs> what is he doing so this time also i failed i believe like i just told you that you can only be successful because of your failures not because of your success so this big failure of my life was about to be the reason behind a very big success of my life that i didn't know realized it later how during modeling days a friend came to me with some photographs he got clipped from somewhere and when i saw them i was surprised i said what photographs man great there were no digital cameras at that time so i said man this would be great i want to learn this for the first time in my life my inner voice said that i want to learn photography man i want to be a photographer i saw an ad in the newspaper went there and joined a short two week course of photography I didn't know what was I doing why was I doing it didn't think about it just listen to my heart you know from inside that feeling comes that this is what I wanted got it just went to my mother took 12000 rupees went and bought a camera started clicking photographs of my relatives friends everyone for free didn't have a clue what I was doing kept on doing it doing it now what happens is that even when you listen to your inner voice that you will move in that direction you will take a step take an action and what you want will go and clash with the reality which will be very different i wanted to become a very good photographer but the reality was that thousands of photographers in india who had learned photography for one two even four years and even they were not able to do much and what had i done just a two week course so i wasn't a very good photographer bang this was the turning point where one of my failures turned into success for me between all those photographers and me there was a small difference what i mean is that i had failed in modeling but they had not when i used to struggle as a model i knew that 90% modeling agencies were fraud so what i did was i made a list of 70 80 fraud agencies and 10 15 genuine modeling agencies and started circulating it to everybody that this one is fraud fraud and this one is genuine 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 and people started liking this after this i gave a small ad in the newspaper free portfolio and everyone came a lot of people came i told the truth no tricks no lies straight forward i said look i'm not a very big photographer or a great photographer i have just finished my course from here of 2 weeks so one option is that you get your own film roll get the processing done and your cost will be this much 3000 rupees or the second option is that i do everything for you now if i go to any wholesale market so the same film roll you get for 150 rupees i get it for 50 rupees and in this complete exercise i'll get 1500 rupees so i said we can do it as you wish that way or this way so they said we don't have any problem you only do it we'll be spending the same amount see this is what i've always believed 
and will always believe that if you want to do anything in life, tell the truth. Don't confuse anyone. And people came. I still remember that I had spent 4800 rupees on that first ad because of which 7 or 8 people got their portfolios done from me and the first income of my life, 15 to 20,000 rupees came from here. This was the first success of my life. Now, the second big failure of my life. A guy came to me and said that let's do an event together. Let's do a new year party. They are in fashion these days. Everybody's doing it. Now my inner voice said that I wanted to do an event for a long time. I said, okay, I'll do it with you. No worries. It's just that I don't have the money on me. He said, you don't worry about the money. I'll take care of that. You just execute it. I said, okay, it's a deal. I'll work for a month, organize the party and do everything. Investment will be yours and we will share the profit equally. He said, okay, done. He gave me 15,000 rupees and I distributed those 15,000 rupees to everyone. I paid to the banquet guy, the DJ, caterer, all of them knew me. I went myself and paid some advance to the printer, got the prints made, like stickers, posters, went to some universities and put them around, like banners and all. Now the problem occurred when just three days before the event, that guy came to me and said that I can't give you any more money. I said, but we have to give the money because I have to make all the payments or else they know me and will catch hold of me only. He said, it's your problem. Drop the event. I said, no. So then I arranged the money from somewhere, borrowing it from my friends, 5,000 from here, 2,000 from there. I collected all this money and made all the payments. The event was executed and it was a big success. It was the night of 31st December, 1999. This event was named Disc 2000. The new era of 2000 was about to begin. All the money was inside a bag. I went to that guy and said, okay man, let's do one thing. Let's calculate how much you and me spent and divide the profit equally. He said, what calculation? Which money? He just took that bag and went away with his friends. Since that day, I haven't seen him around in my entire life. What would have a normal human being and not an alien done in such a situation? In such a condition? Would have cried, become worried? I felt happy because somewhere inside I believed that life's experiences come from bad experiences and I felt happy and said, wow man, this is it. Such a bad experience. What else could be worse than this? I felt happy. And my mother who is sitting here would remember when I came back home at 1.30, I put the music on full volume in my room, on full volume and started dancing alone. Dancing. My parents came in and said, what's up son, seems like your event was a hit. I said, don't ask, how big a hit? <laughs> Just don't ask. And when I told them that this is what happened, I got a lecture for 30 minutes. They said, you are very innocent, dumb. You trust anyone easily. Anybody can make a fool out of you. And why do you believe in what anybody says? I said, no. There must be a reason behind this failure. Maybe today I'm not getting it, but someday I will. And the day I'll get it, Life will change for sure. One year passed by, two years passed by, I didn't get it. Didn't know what was that failure for. Until in 2003, I'd reached a level in photography where I got stuck. The problem was that in photography, it's not only the work but the name that sells. It means that no matter how good I was, but because I didn't have a name, so all those people who got their photos clicked by me were rejected by modeling agencies saying, what trash. What an amateur shoot. Who is this Sandeep Maheshwari? Lives in a cave or what? From where is he? Get yourself clicked from a good photographer. So they used to come back to me saying, what sir, what have you done? What a bad shoot. Here, have a look. So I said, I have to make a name somehow. How to do it? I don't know. But I believed it's easy. An idea came from somewhere to make a world record in photography. I went to Limca Book of Records, met the chief editor and I remember I was sitting, me this side and she on that side of the table. I had already taken an appointment. She said, uh, yeah, tell me. I said that I want to make a world record in photography. She said, okay, so what have you thought of? I said, you tell me what needs to be done. <laughs> because somehow I managed to reach there, they could not throw me out. So she said that, look, it's not that easy. You have to do a lot of things. 
So it has to be something very big. I asked like, she said, there are two options. Either you make India's record or world record. I said, forget about India. Tell me about the world record. <laughs> How will I make it? So, she narrated a list to me. She told me what all is needed. At least 10,000 photographs need to be clicked. No two photographs should look similar. All should be different. Our moderators will be present there. A minimum of 100 models need to be hired. And this must be done within 12 hours. And after that, when the film rolls will be made, we will check the contact sheets. And if everything is okay, then your name will come in Limca Book of Records. You will get the certificate. I said, okay. Anything else? <laughs> it will be done. I gave her a date saying that on this date of the next month, this world record will be made. I had no clue what will I do. As I was leaving her office, she said, Sandeep, just one second. I said, yes, ma'am. She said, I recommend you to hire an event management company for this. The moment she said an event management company, fuck. I said, madam, here is an event management company in front of you, Disc 2000. So that big failure of my life was about to turn into a big success. And from there, I got the confidence that I will make the world record. And when I told my friends about it, they said, what are you saying, man? You will create a world record. You will hire an event management company, spend three, four hundred thousand rupees. I said, no event management company. I'll do it myself. They said, okay, models, you need 100 models. And one model will charge at least 5,000 rupees. Do you have that much of money, 500,000 rupees to give to the models? I said, I don't even have 10,000 rupees. I don't know how or what will I do. I don't have it. But I said, this world record will be made. They said, no. I said, yes, it will happen. I kept saying, it will, it will, it will. And when we ask from within, we get answers. And I got the answer. A model was sitting in front of me. It was a very interesting moment. He said, I don't have this much money for the portfolio, but I can give you 500 rupees. I said, no issues. No issues, my inner voice said. I said, I'm making my world record. And you just give me 500 rupees. Your photos will be clicked. My world record will be made. And you will get a portfolio in just 500 rupees. Any problems? He said, no problem. I spread this message across. People queued up after that. Somebody is making a portfolio in just 500 rupees. A portfolio otherwise made in 30,000 rupees is being done in just 500. A total of 122 models came. More than 10,000 photographs were clicked in 10 hours and 44 minutes. No two shots were similar. The whole event was managed by me. And at the end of the day, my world record was made. Now I'll show you the biggest failure of my life. I'll not tell you about it, rather show it to you. That what was it? At the age of 21, after I made the world record, it came to my mind that I want to write a book on marketing. And I was a college dropout. I left college in third year. Now I went to the publishers that this is how I've written a book on marketing and I want you to publish it. So they used to talk very formally saying, yeah, have a seat. So where have you done your MBA from? I said, listen, I'm no MBA. I'm a college dropout. So they said, no, this is not the way. We can't publish it. And all the publishers refused wherever I went. But I said, I'll do it myself. I will. I will publish this book, come what may. I got it published. And here's that book right in front of you that I wrote at the age of 21 <laughs> on marketing. Now, what is so special about this book? It's written on it that it's one of the most unusual books in the world. One of the strangest. Why? Because almost all the books in English open this way, like this. But this one opens from here. This is the first page of this book. This is the second one. This is the third. This is the fourth one. And this is the fifth. So it's a reversed book. A reversed book. Reversed. The word spread that a photographer has written a reversed book. People talk about doing something out of the box, something different. I think it's all pointless. You hang yourself upside down from a tree and say it's different. It's pointless, no? There has to be a reason. So the reason why this book is reversed was written on the first page at that time. And the reason was a big reason. If you can't even change the way you read, how can you change the way you think? That is, if you can't even change the simplest of your habits, how will you change your life? Just leave it. This book is not meant for you. And that's what happened. People took it seriously.
They said, okay, if you don't want us to read it, so be it. <laughs> Out of the 1,000 copies I got published, just 150 got sold. And the remaining 850 copies were taking a lot of space in the house. Because it was a small house with a studio and all of us packed together. So my mother gave them to a ragman. So a decent failure. Maybe you will see some grams wrapped in the pages of that book. Failure, that too a big one. Didn't know why this happened. Not at that time, but today I know. This book failed, but to write this book, I read countless books. And while doing so, my fertile land got plowed so many times, so many times, that everything became easy for me. Right. So today, everything I am is because of my failures. Now, final points. That from where did the biggest success of my life come? In the world of modeling, we were the only agency that got a declaration signed from people that said, there is no guarantee of work. We'll make your portfolio, give it to the agencies. If you're lucky, you will get work or else not. And being truthful and honest, we became one of the biggest agencies of Delhi. Though we tried to click the best of photos, but the models still didn't get any work in the market. So my inner voice said, I must do something for these models, something. What? I don't know. Not to take money from them, but to solve their problems somehow. And when the question came, it was answered. An ad agency guy came and said that I don't have time. We will scan this photograph only and print it in the ad. Do you have any problem? I said, why would I have a problem? I called up the model and said, do you have a problem? He said, what are you saying, sir? What problem? What else can I ask for? That if my photograph comes in a newspaper or an ad, the photo got printed, that model was happy, I was happy, an ad agency was happy. And this was that turning point of my life. That's when the calling came, that this is what I want to do, and this is what I did. I'll explain it to you in brief, that all the ads around you, that you see in newspapers, magazines, or holdings, almost all the brands in India, the photographs seen in them are ours. Those companies buy them from us. So today, in the given situation, if you ask me that what's success for me, then here is a simple answer to it in a few things. Because success is not just limited to one thing, but many things in life, various aspects of life. So one of my aspects, that this company Images Bazaar was started to do something good for those models. Six years ago, in 2006, when this company started, I swore that from that very day, I'll not even take a single penny from any model, but will pay them instead. And till date, thousands of models have worked with us and not even one of them can say that we have taken a single penny from him or her. Rather, we have paid them. This is success for me. This is success for me. And this is the reason our company has no investors and will never have one. Because investors won't be able to understand all this. What will they say? They will say, you are crazy. Being such a famous production house of India, one of the biggest, doing so many shoots, and that too genuine. If you ask the models to pay you 50,000 rupees, they will not even ask why, and put the amount on your table. But we will not take it. Not today, not ever, never. <laughs> Secondly, what is success for me? I narrated an incident of that female whom I told to leave. The one who asked for 10,000 rupees, I gave her 8,000 rupees and then told her to leave. When I got stuck, that day, I decided that from today onwards, if I hire anyone, then I'll never tell the person to leave. Never. They can go by themselves if they want to, but I'll never ask them to leave. Eight years, 10 years, 12 years, 14 years, everybody is still there. In our company, faces don't change. All are still there. So success for me is, to share everything with my employees and do all that I can do and go beyond any limit to keep them happy. Any limit. This is success for me. If you ask me that what do I believe today? Am I successful or not? I look straight into your eyes and say, yes, I am. I am successful. Why so? Is it because of the work I did in the past? No man, that was past. All the awards I got, business I did, that is all gone. That was past. It doesn't matter. There are many people in this world 
who keep on saying that I failed once in the past and keep saying I'm a failure, failure, failure. Come on, man. It's not that you are a failure. You were a failure. You were. Right. On the other hand, there are people who became successful in one thing in the past and keep talking about that only. Keep talking that I am successful. I am. You know why? Because 20 years ago I did that. Back then. No man. What are you doing today? Are you really happy today? You were happy back then. But today are you doing what the world expects you to do? Or are you doing what your inner voice says? If you're following your inner voice, then only you are successful. Otherwise, you were a success yesterday, but you are a failure today. So I am successful today because of what I am doing today. Well, you'll be surprised to know that some people still think of me as a big failure. Why? I'm doing so many good things. Business is good. Everything is good. Those people who were running in a race with me. And everybody believed that Sandeep Maheshwari will become the biggest entrepreneur of India. But I stopped running. I said, continue. I'm not in this race. So as per them, all this I'm doing today is out of their comprehension. But I'm a failure for them and it doesn't make a difference to me. <laughs> to hell with them. It doesn't matter whether someone praises me or abuses me. It's all temporary. Today you all are praising me because you're feeling good. But tomorrow in media, if you read something negative about me, then you'll be the ones abusing me, cursing me. You only will be saying, what man, what a cheap fellow. So will I be a failure then? So will I be saying that I'm a failure? So I'm not successful because some people think that I'm a success. Or some people think I'm a failure. I am successful because I believe that I am a success. Yesterday I met one of my friends and he was asking that from where do I get the inspiration of doing all this? From where? It all started when I was 12 or 13. My grandmom used to narrate a story to me and I liked it so much that I listened to it daily and cried daily. My grandmom used to say, I'll not narrate it again because you cry. And I used to say, please, please. It was a story of a man who used to be very happy with his family, friends, very happy, enjoying. Then a stage came in his life when greed crept in. And because of that greed, he started fighting with his parents, brothers and sisters, with the whole world. Started thinking just about himself and got separated from everyone. He even started fighting with his own wife and kids. So in the remaining last few seconds of his life, when he was about to leave this world, tears were pouring down and he was crying, crying and crying. And the last words he uttered were that I made a big mistake. I made a big mistake. And he left this world saying this. So when I used to listen to that story, something happened inside me. I don't know what it was, but I always used to think that when my last moments will come, what will I say? What will I say to my people? I didn't know it then, but today I know that during those last few seconds of my life, tears will be pouring down, but I'll be crying out of happiness. And while crying, I'll not say anything to anyone, but smile. And say to myself, that wow man, what a life. Wow. 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 This is life. This is life. I did it. Saying this within me only, not saying anything to anyone. No regrets whatsoever. Now, the final moment of this seminar. I told you in the beginning of this seminar that I don't want anything from you and will never talk about my benefit. I lied to you. I'll ask for something. Won't let you go like this. I'm going to ask for something. So I'm going to ask for something from you from the bottom of my heart. If possible, give it or else don't. 
So I fold my hands and request you all that today all of you have a hunger to do something, to become someone that has brought you here. But a day will come in your life when you will have much more than you need. That day, that day if you find someone with a hunger, just be of a little help to that person. That's it. Today, this was the last life-changing seminar of my life. One thing is ending here, but another thing is taking off. I'm gonna keep recording all my experiences one by one in videos. Record them, record them, record them. Today, I told you it's easy. So why is it easy? In every situation of my life, how did I make the smallest of problems and the most complicated problems easy for myself? I'll tell you all in those videos. I'll open up everything. I just open it up, my heart, my mind, so that tomorrow if someone will need to know something or do something, he will just go to that place and will do whatever he wants to do for free. And I'll go from this world, but millions like me will come forward. Millions, millions out of you only. Millions like me, where I am standing, right here, someone else will be here, some other crazy fellow, someone else will be doing something like this and this world will change, this world will change. Today, I can say that my life's mission is fulfilled and even if God comes and says, it's over, then I'll say, let's go, let's go, let's go. Anyway, you say, I did what I wanted to do, did it. Till today, millions of people have attended my seminars. And if I continued further, another few million would have seen it. But now it's video recording, this video recording that's going on, will be watched by billions in near future. Out of them, a few people will be there, whose conscience will call out, not from here, but from here that I have to share with those people who need me. And the day this happens, the day this happens, that day, not only in India, but across this whole world, nobody will be hungry. Nobody will be hungry. This world will change. Because this is also easy! It's easy! It's easy! This world will change! Will change!